Hey yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of the Phoenix Palace Podcast, aka P3, episode 6. And today we're going to be talking about the new special teams blog that's been coming out, uh, that came out recently, written by the creative director of Man NFL, Rex Dixon himself. Without further ado, let me say this as well. If you haven't done so, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're listening to this via YouTube. Subscribe to the iTunes uh, podcast and make sure to always, always hit that follow button on Twitch, Twitter, and on the My Blog Talk Radio. Uh, we'll be giving you the links later on at the end of the show. In the meantime, in between time, let's talk about what we're going to be talking about today. And that is the Golden State Warriors and Cavs finals and then also again going to be mentioning the special teams blog with uh that was written by rex himself and going to be giving my opinions on it before i begin let me say this and let me caveat this because uh, i know this probably possibly will be an issue later on and that is in no way shape and form am i trying to bash anybody that writes these blogs for ea to, uh for the game of man nfl 17 I say understand this. When it comes to the game, I can only speak on the information that I'm given and the information that I, you know, have experience with. What I mean by that is, you know, I know a lot of these times it seems like I'm very, very negative. It seems like I'm very, very skeptical, but for good reason. Again, I have not been down to EA. I have not been invited down to EA. I have not even began to play Madden NFL 17, and unfortunately, I will not be able to go to EA play this year. You know, if I could, I would, but unfortunately, my current situation right now, I cannot go. So I can only give my thoughts and opinions on the information that I'm given uh, and that I am working with. And right now, and the, the are, those are these blogs. So, again, if it seems like I'm bashing and stuff like that, I am not. Again, I am just trying to offer my opinions and thoughts and feelings and uh, not only just for myself, but some of the hardcore competitive guys that may have you know been feeling the same way or same type of way uh, about Madden NFL 16 or just Madden in general. So... Again, just to kind of caveat that before we begin, before anybody kind of like jumps off the, the deep end and stuff like that, uh, and before this becomes an issue. Again, we're talking about the Golden State Warriors and Cavs. Cavs defend their home court 2-1 now in the series. Uh, again, this was kind of predicted. The Cavs are undefeated at home still. They need to bounce back. Steph Curry did not play nearly as well. Klay Thompson got hurt, uh, and the Cavs took advantage of that without Kevin Love, mind you, and then just ended up winning the game, completely destroying the Warriors, uh, just blowing them out of proportion, blowing them out of the water. Do I think the Cavs can win this game four? No, I don't think this is going to be uh, a win for the Cavs in game four. I did expect the game went three win, but game four, I think it's going to be a whole different story. If the Warriors take this, again, it's going to be another 3-1 series, and then if the Cavs fought, fight back, they fight back, but... Uh, I don't expect them to be as consistent. I think this was just like a desperation kind of game, just to avoid being swept. But I don't think they are going to be keeping up with this all series in my mind. So uh, we'll see how it goes in game four. I still have to go on for, say, Warriors in seven. Uh, it might be six, depending on how good or bad Steph and Clay play. But I honestly have a feeling that this is going to go still go to seven games in Golden State. And then the Golden State Warriors end up winning this on their home court and becoming uh, NBA champions. In the meantime, let's switch gears here, talking about the special teams improvements blog. And this particular blog, I did not like. I didn't like it uh, for the most part. There's some, then the reason is when I mention these later on, there's some contradicting statements that made no sense to me when I was interpreting the information that was being read um, as I was reading this. And it just did not seem like this was the, uh, like overall, I don't think this was, a good move, I want to say. Uh, I think I like what they try to do, and I see where the direction they're trying to go, but some of these things that I, I'll read off to you as I'm going along just do not make any kind of sense to me or just kind of are head-scratching, like, kind of like, why would y'all implement this, uh, stuff like that. And again, I don't have the game, so maybe when I play the game and give hands on the game, uh, it'll make a little bit more sense. But for the time being, uh, we'll see what happens here. So let's get into the vlog itself. Once again, this is written by Rex Dixon, creative director of Madden NFL yeah, 17 here. And the first thing that pops up is that says that uh, Xbox One plays a four culmination community feedback in years of technological advancements. In our previous blog, we detailed the lead feature in the ground game. Today, we will cover updates within special teams and top community requests past defense. We're also excited to be introducing game-changing ball physics. So the first thing that you have here is special teams. 
Uh, basically, this is the third phase of the game. This is an area that hasn't changed much in Madden for quite some time. And the, according to the blog, it says, To be honest, special teams in Madden was largely a non-factor. Kicks were too easy and blocks were almost impossible without exploits. We felt pretty strongly that this was not representative of what we are seeing in the NFL. Our goals in this area were to add strategy, risk, and reward elements, and the potential for game deciding plays in special teams. So now the first thing that pops up is that we, now we have a kick meter that is completely changed from what we're used to. We're kind of going back to that old style of Madden, I, I believe, where it's the three button approach instead of uh, clicking the or excuse me, not clicking the right stick going backwards and then forwards. Um, I actually did like this. I don't like the three button approach because of two reasons. This was the first skepticism and critical point I have of this blog. The problem is, you know, we never understood, like, how this works in lag, you know, an online lag and when players have horrible connection or the EA servers are kind of going wonky and stuff like that. How is the three button meter going to affect our field goals? You know, are we going to is it going to be consistently the same rate? Or is it going to be just like, well, here we go. We press a button and then it just skips it, skips ahead. And then now we're kicking the ball to like the cheerleaders and stuff like that. That's my biggest issue uh, with lag. And then especially. We'll mention this field goal block and stuff like that. We'll come to that later. But again, how it does... And the second question is, when it comes to the users, how much is kicker accuracy now going to matter? You know, because, again, you can line it up and stuff like that, but, you know, are... You know, will that be a factor or is it just computer-based? You know, we don't have the answers to these questions, unfortunately. But basically, for this three-button approach, all you have to do is basically click the button, which, uh, according to this picture, is A. And I guess on PS4, it's going to be X. You start the kick, click again, click the button again to stop at the top of the meter to set the power, and then once again to set the accuracy. The harder you try to kick it, the more difficult it will be to hit the accuracy window. And then now they have restored the squib kick mechanic based on community response and new to Madden NFL 17 on Sky Punt and Backspin options. Now, the problem is, real quick, why did we get rid of squib kicks in Madden 16? That made absolutely no sense to me. To get rid of a squib kick that... Honestly, I didn't have too many problems with having squib kicks. I mean, like I said, it's one of those things where you just use to burn down time at the end of the half, at the end of the game, where it's maybe like five seconds or maybe like three seconds and stuff like that, and you force your opponent to either catch the ball and do something with it or pitch it or whatever the case may be, and the game is over. But to get rid of the squib kicks, again, it was another head-scratching move by EA uh, on Madden NFL 16, along with a couple of other issues. Um, but... Again, this didn't make sense. For now that we have it back, I don't know why we had got rid of it. I wish we had a clear response as to why Squib Kids were going away. I wish they would actually tell us why exactly why instead of just be like, well, now we're bringing it back. You know what I'm saying? So, again, the, the, the recap here. Lag for the three-button approach now and then Squib Kicks, why they were now just implemented back into the game instead of uh, removed from Madden 16. The next uh, section talks about trick plays. Um I'm and basically now the, the offense will have several trick plays from field goal and punt formations. Um, I don't like trick plays. I think it's corny. I think it's stupid. It's not to me as a competitor. If you're using that, you shouldn't even be on the field. Uh, I mean, it's one thing to troll and stuff like that, but here's the biggest issue that I have with this particular one, and that is when it comes to a fake punt pass, the punters and sometimes the end or kickers in this particular instance, if they get subbed in that punter for whatever reason. Um, they have ridiculous accuracy when it comes to making complete passes down the field. So I would honestly hope that's being changed because most of their stats are in the 20s, the 30s, and maybe even the 40s, depending on who it is. But I remember a game seeing on Twim with Gibbs and Fars was somebody was or one of those two actually had a game with a punter as their quarterback and was able to make dots left and right up the field. And to me, I mean, it was funny. But at the same time, I kind of took a step back and realized how ridiculous that was that a punter could literally throw dots left and right up and down the field and had no business of even making those type of passes, let alone that accurate of passes. So I really hope that's something that they're looking forward to, especially guys that don't even have any throw, like 15 throw power, 25 accuracy in all stats or whatever. Like, that's that's silly. So um, hopefully that's something that they're looking at because, like I said, that's a big issue and I hope that somebody has actually brought it up a race issue. If not, I'm glad I was the one that was able to do it. And hopefully that could get changed and fixed by the time uh, Madden NFL 17 arrives in about a couple of months here. So, again, trick plays. You got a shovel pass from like, what it looks like on the screen here. Um, and it's, it's meh. I mean, I don't like trick plays. Let's just keep going. 
<clears throat> kick blocks. Um, this is the issue I have. This is the biggest issue. One of the biggest issues, actually, I should say. But if I had to rank these, this is probably the biggest issue I have of all the things I have for this blog. And this is because, it, to me, when I interpret this information, it, con- it contradicts itself to me. It stands out as a, like, oh, you know, we want this, but then we, or we took out this, but now we implemented this. So here, here's what I'm talking about, right? So uh, the paragraph reads, speaking of all-out block kick, uh, formations, at long last, we have des- a design system for blocking kicks. Gone are the days of user-created exploit kick blocks now replaced by a system that has a very contrite control over frequency and success chances. Let's again, let, let me read that sentence to you because... I want you to keep that in mind as I'm reading this, right? Gone are the days of user-created exploit kick blocks now replaced by a system that has very tight control over frequency and success chances. I mean, let's just keep going. I'm going to explain why I'm mad about that. When you call one of several uh, punter kick block formations, the players who are designated as kick blockers are marked with a B icon, like B is a boy or bravo. Uh, select one of these players to use a jump to snap mechanic to have a small chance at breaking through the line and driving in for a kick. The win chance is only the beginning. Successfully steering yourself in for a block and timing a block attempt are all necessary to achieve one of the most dynamic and exciting plays in football. Rest assured, there are the cat systems in place to ensure users do not exploit this new implementation. Uh, implementation kick block. Stop right there. I don't believe that last sentence, to be honest, because they say that every time that like, oh, new systems have been implemented to prevent like glitching and all this stuff, but. Constantly, year after year, we're experiencing glitches. I don't value anything in that last sentence because, to me, I'm going to call my shot here. These uh, kick blocks and block formations, or whatever case may be, are going to be the most frustrating thing of Madden NFL 17, in my mind. Again, we're contradicting ourselves here, right? It says, the first, let me just start by saying this. In Madden NFL 16, the, even in Madden NFL 15, the biggest issue was glitch, some kind of glitch to make sure and ensure that block kicks or kicks were being blocked. Madden NFL 16 nowadays is actually now kind of prevalent in the online head-to-head community where people are blocking kicks left and right. So now, instead of getting rid of the problem, just completely nerfing the, the timing and snap and stuff like that, blocking kicks, now we're having a system to enhance the way we're blocking kicks. Think about that, right? Let's start with that sentence I, men- I mentioned. Gone are the days of user-created exploit kick blocks, now replaced by a system that has very tight control over frequency and succession. We have a system now to enhance you to block the kicks now. It's not just, oh, you know, the user is just going to exploit or do like hold the button or something or hold RT or whatever, or right, or right trigger or R2. No, 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 no. Now we're going to have a system that helps you block kicks more. Like, it, it just doesn't make sense. Because now we're saying you, we're going to use a jump to snap mechanic, then steer, then hopefully dive in time to block the kick. But w- this was an issue in Madden NFL 60 that never got addressed, unfortunately, because it was too late in the season to really make any changes. But this was a big issue, especially when it came to qualifiers for that salary cap rank tournament. People were blocking kicks or field goal glitching it or whatever the case may be, and nobody batted an eye, but we batted an eye to blitzes. And even in, double loop blitzes are not prevalent. They, they're fixing it, hopefully. But still, we're not addressing the main issues of the game. We're addressing stuff that possibly doesn't even need to be patched. We're addressing, we, we, instead of addressing the field goal block issues, instead of addressing aggressive catch at the same time, now we're transitioning now to where we have. And speaking of aggressive catch, I got another beef with that later on the blog. But now we're, again, we're, instead of solving the problem, now we're enhancing the problem with a system now. Like, I understand it says, okay, you know, it's going to be limited, you know, users are not going to exploit this. But at the same time, this is not good. This was not the move. Uh, the right move in my mind to make when it comes to future of Madden NFL 17 and, and fixing potentially what was the biggest issues of Madden NFL 16 nowadays, and that's blocking kicks. Uh, let me take a quick swig of water real quick. Right, let's keep going. Multiplayer catch outcomes. Again, this is another issue that I have. Again, this is not the bash, but this is just the call out stuff that doesn't make sense to me. Despite all the success of Madden NFL 16, we've heard from our hardcore competitive community we needed to further tune the aggressive catch to not be so overpowered and available to every type of wide receiver. We listened and made several tuning changes along with the addition of a swap mechanic to help address these concerns. First off, we received many complaints that all players were capable of making spectacular catches. That is the very, very defined issue right there. 
everybody could do it. Punters, kickers, defensive tackles, defensive ends, you know, quarterbacks. Darren Sproles could even aggressively catch him. Also, Shane Vereen, halfback J.J. Watt could even aggressive catch. Or even J.J. Watt on the defensive end, if you could sub him in at tight end, he could probably aggressive catch a one-hand moss you. We got it loud and clear that you were getting tired of seeing all the one-handers by letting the different players with vastly different catching abilities. We now restrict those extremely athletic, high degree of difficulty catches to the more elite ball and air receivers only. OBJ, Julio, AB, Hopkins, and Dez are the type of players who will have the ability to do those spectacular catches some, uh, consistently. While a running back or a slot receiver will trigger a catch that's more reflective of his catching ability. The, first, the one sentence I want to address and bring back real quick and I want you to keep in mind is the very first one. And that is, despite all this, or when it says, we've heard from our hardcore computer community, we need to further tune the aggressive catch to not be so overpowered and available to every type of wide receiver. Or I'll just, I'll just substitute wide receiver for this player. So remember these uh, remember these words, further, or excuse me, hardcore competitive community that we needed to further tune the aggressive catch. Just stop right there, okay? So now we keep going, and this is going to be brought up later why I have an issue with this, but for the time being, let's keep going. Uh, it says, next that we heard in some cases the defender would trigger animations that would not match the user's input. This year, we have added significant animation covers to both play receiver and SWAT to ensure you get an animation that matches your intended action. Now, this was a big issue in Madden NFL 16, just solely for the fact that when it came to um, input, the game or the system or whatever the case may be would override it. So, for instance, if you had a tight end that was running across the middle of the field and you see him and you throw it to him and you want the possession catch it, the game will automatically make you rat catch it. And then, obviously, if you get hit, you drop the ball. Same thing with on defense. The ball is in the air. You're trying to play receiver. The game overrides your decision. It makes you play the ball instead for whatever reason. So hopefully they are just that to make it where the user input actually matters. It's actually sharp. It tells and you know you have enough time to actually make the input or the input that you so desire to do. Hopefully. So here we go. Another piece of uh, feedback from the community was that there was never any injury chance on receivers who exposed their bodies and took assistant hits while performing aggressive catches. Injury chances have been increased in these situations for Madden NFL 16. So repeatedly targeting your big threat wide receiver on jump balls and traffic now comes with significant risk of injury to that player. I honestly thought this was going to be a feature in Madden NFL 16 uh, where too many aggressive catches and your guy gets hurt. And speaking of injuries in general, injuries were very, very low this year. And compared to the normal Madden game, Injuries were just extremely low this year, which made us question, as a community, we made us question how much impact does hit power actually matter this year uh, and strength and stuff like that when it comes to defense. So what I would like to see, to see fix, hopefully, if they can make this, is just, once again, just in general, uh, the injury rate, A, and B, update the fumble rate because, you know, guys that should be fumbling aren't fumbling. Guys with low carrying rate that's fumbling or aren't fumbling versus guys who have like 100 carrying and just getting popped. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully that's being addressed as the time goes on here that uh, hit power tends to matter, injuries just in general. Because a lot of times, even let's say like a Dre Archer, which is basically the best player in men in NFL 17, because he would not fumble and he would have like high speed, high acceleration, all that stuff. He'd get popped by like a can chance or get back up and pop back up like it's nothing. You know, when you take a big hit from full force from a guy that's probably twice your weight, you're probably going to be feeling it and probably very, very slow to get up. But instead, in man, NFL 16, we're having these guys just pop back up like, oh, hey, and, you know, nothing happened. You know, let's continue with the next play. Let's rock, coach, you know, type of deal. So uh, hopefully that's being addressed. Uh, I want to skip this next paragraph, and I'm going to bring it back after I talk about the SWAT mechanic here. And basically now we have three of them. I really hope that SWAT is OP. We have play receiver, play ball, or, or just SWAT the ball. I honestly hope the swap mechanic is so OP. I really hope it's OP because that will shut down just any chance of anybody even think about th chucking up lob streaks 50 times in the game and not getting punished for it. I really hope the swap is OP. It's like to a degree where I'm like, yo, like to the point where people are actually forced to make reads in the game instead of just, I'm just going to chuck it up to Des Bryant because, you know, hey, I can. Man, it fell 16, y'all. <laughs> And, you know, you play receiver, or the game overrides your decision, makes you play ball, and then guess what? Now you're getting aggressive called on. So hopefully I'm really praying a SWAT is OP to the point where we start seeing a lot of tipped animations, especially if, if, if it's user control too. Um, 
and you tell the computer that hey, I want to swat this time. Like I really hope they implement like the NCAA style where you could tell your you can have a switch or like a mechanic that says, Hey, I want the my defenders on defense to play aggressive and go for interception more than the than the SWAT. Or hey, I want them to play balance, or hey, I want them to play a super conservative to SWAT down everything. You know, I wish they oh hopefully they implement that, but I don't think they did this year, according to the information I'm receiving. So uh I and speaking of uh aggressive conservative balance and stuff like that i honestly hope speaking of swatting in general i really hope i really hope that the defenders are more aggressive to the ball this year i am so sick of volleyball swats i am so sick of my guys just not going for the pick at all it's one thing to be conservative ball in the air whatever the case may be okay whatever but at the same time at this very same time if the ball is being thrown at you, chest, like the quarterback was playing catch with you, there is no reason why the guys should be swatting the ball down, volleyball swatting it down. No, that's unacceptable to me. The guy, like defense is hungry. They are hungry for you to do. Like, that's why you hear them all the time, test me. I dare you to test me. Because they will go for the pick. You throw it, like Richard Sherman, for instance. You throw it Richard Sherman's way. He's going to intercept that pass more often than not. You know, like, Reeve, you can't just throw a Reeve on man-to-man coverage and expect him to just, uh, like, nah, fam, I'm just going to swat that down. No, no, no. Like, nobody's going to sit there and just, you know, you know what? I'm not feeling the interception today, bro. I'm just going to swat. No. Again, with swat animation, I don't have a problem with it playing ball in air if, if it's using control, but I want my computer to be a lot more aggressive to the ball when the ball is being thrown in the air, going for that pick, going for that, you know, going for the strips, going for turnovers, you know. Instead of just, nah, fam, here you go, have another chance, offense. Have another chance, offense. Here you go again, third time. You threw in the bad coverage or double coverage this time. You know, have a fifth, have like the tenth time to try. Maybe you'll get it right this time. And this time you're going to get bailed out and actually get a touchdown and or three. So, again, hopefully defense is just getting completely overhauled this year. And SWAT is OP, zones are OP and stuff like that. That's how I want uh, Man 17 to be instead of what we've been getting these past couple of years. So now we get into a section called ball physics, um, and I'm actually kind of excited for this one, not going to lie, because ball physics are actually very, very huge, and in the past, we have not had the ball physics, so uh, let me take a quick swig of water, and then we'll talk about this real quick. So the main thing with the ball physics now, according to the blog, is that um, one of the biggest outliers was the ball, which was running what was, we referred to as legacy physics from the Gen 3 era. With Madden NFL 17, the ball has been fully integrated into our Ignite physics entrant, and the results are game-changing. The, re- uh, the future will have a significant impact on several major systems throughout the game. Here's a breakdown of just a few areas of the game impacted by ball physics. So now we have three of them. We have organic block, or excuse me, organic knockouts and tip balls, block kicks, and onside kicks, and loose ball recovery. Um, we're not going to talk about the block kicks. We already hit that on that. Onside kicks are just, man, I mean... There's more unpredictability on onside kicks now. Uh, what we're mainly going to be hitting on real quick is the the tip balls and then the fumble recoveries and stuff like that. So um, reading the tip, the organic knockouts and tip ball section says a huge legacy flaw in the man catch system is once a player has matched a catch, the ball will stay in the receiver's hands regardless. So this was a huge issue, man, 16, where the ball just goes right through the defenders like the freaking receivers playing Mortal Kombat on some scorpion stuff. And just literally just reach right through the defender's body on some fatalities type of stuff and got the ball. And, of course, you know, that's frustrating, especially when your user is there, when you play the right way, you play receiver, and they still catch it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's a huge issue. Now, it says with ball physics, if a defender collides with the ball during the catch animation, the ball has a chance to be organically knocked out. This also applies to hands and limbs. If they get an arm between the ball and the receiver, the receiver will no longer hopefully, uh, be able to pull the ball through the defender. This is quite a game changer for catches and traffic, and strategic use of the pet ca- uh, possession catch is critical. So, well, I mean, like I said, I, I was honestly hoping, my brutal honest opinion video of Madden NFL 16, I said this on my YouTube channel, I said, uh, I thought that originally at the game, the possession catch was going to be the most OP thing, and that turned to be the aggressive catch, unfortunately, and I really hope now this time is the, the uh, this holds true, that the possession catch is actually probably going to be more OP. That's what I hope, but we'll see. Uh, continuing on here, it says, in those cases where a ball's tips while they're broken up, the path the ball takes is purely momentum and physics-based. Players can react to it in real time and will simply catch it off the tip. 
As a result of this, we attune catch chances and tip ball catch chances accordingly. Uh, dropped interceptions are much more rare this year. In the passes that get broken up, swatted, or tipped that potentially be called a tip. We have added several diving, sliding, and below-the-knees type catches to cover these scenarios. Really hope that they do not. You know what? I'm just going to stop right there. I really, really, really hope that the dropped interceptions are not a problem this year. I really hope that, again, interception rates are sky high this this upcoming Madden season because Lord knows if I play another Madden title that has 10 drop picks in a drive or just continually increased amount of drop pick after drop pick after drop pick after drop pick, I'm going to have to lose my mind because at that point, I feel like, at, the, at or at least at that stage of time, if we experience another year, then the developers, honestly, and not trying to bash nobody, but this is a solid truth. At that point, the developers have failed in that, in that aspect of the game where we are constantly, instead of Madden and the sports games in general as being competitive, uh, you know, chess, the chess match that is Madden, we're content, where it's like, it's like checkers. It's like, and I actually did a video called State of Madden 16 in my eyes, checkers of chess. And I addressed these issues. But uh, again, this comes down to stop. This I'm just going to go straight with it and direct with it. If you're a developer listening to this, do not, whatever the case may be, do not increase the dropped interception rate, whatever you do. If it's sky high now, leave it sky high. Do not patch it. Do not nerf it. Do not tuning update it. Do not do anything. Leave it the way it is because, again, I've said this many times in the past on stream, on my YouTube videos, and everywhere in between on Twitter. I will rather lose a game, for me personally, I would rather lose a game if I throw six interceptions and bad reads and forcing them to get into coverage and making the mistakes. I would rather lose that game knowing I have to get better at the game than simply lose to some scrub, some bum, some terrible player that has no business being on my football field that throws it in double coverage, triple coverage, quadruple coverage, you know, places he shouldn't even be throwing it and not getting punished for it. Bad, you know, with either interception, pick six, whatever the case may be, not getting punished enough for those reads. And that was the hugest issue I had with these past few Madden titles, a 25 next gen on 15 and on 16. Too much casual play, too much catering to the casual player. That's that. That cannot be the case anymore. We have to stop that mentality. We have to stop baby feeding. We have to stop spoon feeding and babysitting these terrible players. It, it makes you question too. What is the value of practice mode? What is the value of skills trainers mode at that point? If we keep catering to casual players, I'm sorry, it's not acceptable anymore. And as a, a sorry, and, and again, not trying to bash somebody. But again, if you're trying to comp- uh, compete or appeal to your hardcore players, the guys that are promoting your game on Twitch, the guys that are promoting YouTube videos of your product, then I'm sorry. You have to basically say, I'm sorry, casual player. You're throwing bad decisions. You're going to get picked. You're going to get punished for it. You got to make them throw those five interceptions, those six interceptions, man. You got to make them rage quit. You got to make them but because they have no choice but to get better. And if they don't want to get better, that's fine. You can keep making those same reasons. You're going to lose a lot more games. And that's what should happen in Madden NFL 17. Punish the bad players that make the wrong decisions. Don't hurt the good players that are making the adjustments, that are taking the time in practice mode to be it better, that are making uh, the right plays. Don't punish us. Punish those. Punish the scrubs. Punish the scrubs, man. So, again, it goes back when it says dropped interceptions are much more rare this year. Do not tune that. Do not patch it. Do not, do not listen to the mask. The casual master that can't make a read, like, yo, man, I can't make a read. Don't do it because every year it seems like this is the case. We always get, we always start off well and exception rates are high. Then guess what? The first tuning, just like in Mad 16, the first tuning update, everything went downhill. After every patch, the round of interceptions got worse and lower and lower and lower and lower. So, again, Please do if it's sky high right now, leave it sky high for the rest of the year. Don't patch anything. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, we got the loose ball recovery, fumble recoveries, and Madden have been one of the many long-standing legacy issues that desperately needed attention. We knew by introducing ball physics and organic behaviors, we would completely need, uh, we would need to completely revisit our loose ball and tip ball recovery logic. This includes a new set of animations for loose ball recoveries that cover both in air and on ground scenarios. Players are smarter and react to loose ball faster and have a ton of new animations dedicated to those loose ball recoveries. Now, a lot of the uh, fumble recoveries are like the worst things in Madden, man. There's been a ton of videos and compilations of how bad loose balls have or fumble recoveries have been in Madden 16 
or not, not even just Man Six, it's just Madden in general. It's, it's been a long-standing legacy issue that it seems now has been finally addressed now that ball physics actually matter this year. So we'll see. We'll see again. This is one of those things I'm just like, we'll see. You know, sh- show me something because I have nothing else to really go off of. Finally, the last thing here is, is to throw out the sack. Um, this is basically whenever you get hit, your quarterback gets hit, they're able to throw it. It's like an incomplete pass or, or it should be a fumble, but somehow it's still an incomplete pass. Um, so now basically it says with ball physics, we have now have organic outcomes in these situations. They can result in fumbles and strip sacks. If the quarterback's arm is going forward when he is hit, you're also going to see that outcome play organically. This all plays a big role in fumble versus incomplete pass. It is now more important than ever to get the ball out quickly under pressure. My only comment on that one, speaking of getting the ball out quickly, click quickly, damn, I can't talk. Um, make sure to, or not make sure, I really hope that the quarterback release time is a lot faster. You know, it seems way too slow in men 16. Doesn't even, doesn't even matter who the quarterback is. It's way too slow. And I wish it was just a tiny bit faster. Especially um, the accuracy has to be improved for getting hit. You know, it, it's ridiculous how like, you can get hit and try, or you try to throw the ball away and you get hit and the ball just rockets out of bounds. And speaking of throwing the ball away, I really hope that maybe in future blogs they probably bring this up. But I really hope the throw a ball away is a different button this time instead of clicking the right stick because the pump fake and throw the ball away has to go. There has to be a change here. Because this system is not working. It, it, it needs to be assigned a different button uh, overall, whether it be like the left one or L1 or left bumper, and then the right stick be completely throw the ball away. Something needs to change because th- this system is obviously not working. It's failing. It, to me, it's a, it's a failed combination of buttons that, for two completely different things that should not happen. So hopefully they're looking at that. But final thoughts real quick, and then I'm just going to leave it uh, with that. Um, overall, like I said, didn't like the log. A lot of contradicting statements. You know, dropped interceptions, gotta fix that. Ball physics, gotta see that. Um, block kicks, don't like that at all. I, I really don't. I, I feel like that's gonna be the biggest bane of man in the NFL 17 this year. Now that has, there is a system to enhance block kicks. Um, but again, I can only say this because, again, I have not played the game, I have not been to EA, and I have not gone to EA play, so I'm, I'm working with the information I got here, folks. Um, and like I said, this is not trying to bash nobody. It's not trying to come after anybody's head, but I'm just stating the information and giving you guys how I feel and my opinions on them. But let me know how you guys feel. You know, if you feel like you feel the same way, let me know. A lot of you guys have been good at supporting the podcast. have been sending some positive love my way uh, with likes and sharing the blog, or not sharing the blog, sharing the podcast, uh, you know, asking me about uh, questions about the podcast stuff like that so to see that is very very encouraging if you haven't done so man make sure to follow the channel man follow me on youtube follow me or subscribe to my youtube channel subscribe to my uh podcast on my blog talk radio follow me on twitter follow me on twitch that and then subscribe to it on itunes man that's how you get that's how you get all the episodes all the time whenever you want to and then like i said just continue to spread the word man the more people that we get behind the show and the more my voice is projected man the better off this game is going to be you know not only just for myself but just for the community the hardcore guys the hardcore competitive guys that really don't have much of a voice uh in madden so on that note guys see you guys in episode seven gonna be talking about the presentation blog and on that note guys 5g's y'all peace